everybody, Earl at thelogbook.com back for more Voyages of Shelf Discovery. We're going to open two things this time around because I am backlogged on Doctor Who stuff that needs to be opened and put on the Doctor Who shelf. Which previously, you know, I kind of gave you a tour of this room, you know, front and back. And there was very little Doctor Who stuff in evidence. That's because it's literally in another room because... There's a lot of it, the stuff that I have opened already. Um, we have Fresh from the UK. This just arrived. The Warriors of the Deep box set. This was a this was the um, beginning of the 1984 season. This was uh, Peter Davison's last season. And it brought back the Silurians from John Pertwee's era. And now we have action figures of the Silurians, which I'm delighted because the John the John Pertwee era Silurians I have very fond memories of, even though they scared the heebie-jeebies out of me um, when I was younger. But keep in mind, when I, when I say when I was younger, I'm talking about I was almost in my teens the first time I saw Doctor Who and the Silurians, which is the uh, 1970 seven-part episode that introduced the Silurians to the Doctor Who universe. Um, the Silurians in those episodes were so otherworldly. I mean, for for 1970 foam rubber and latex masks and suits, they were extremely, extremely effective. The 1984 iteration of these same characters um, was a little bit more a hit or miss because it had been 13 years since they had shown up. Obviously, they had to create completely new masks, completely new suits, and it was a, it was a completely different generation of, you know, BBC costume and prop makers who were designing those things, designing those elements of the characters. And as such, um, th they didn't land exactly on the mark. But I am such a fan of Silurians in general that I am delighted to have even the 1980s Silurians as action figures. I was very surprised that we got any original series Silurians as figures at all. Uh, we Now, we have had Silurians from the new series, um, from specifically from Matt Smith's first season, which um, brought them into the new series with a completely different look. Um, I... I am not... One of these, uh, one of these fans who's like, you know, oh, it, everything from the original series is better by default. But I really did like the original series formulation of the Silurians much better. I mean, they just, they look much more alien to to my eye than the the new series ones, which are obviously. Um, you know, much thinner makeup applications in kind of the modern Star Trek funny forehead mold. Um, these guys, you're, you know, they are disguising the human inside much more effectively. Now, these fellows are tied down, and I don't have my scissors with me, but... But what I do have is, uh, embarrassingly enough, a pair of nail clippers. I want to say, okay, before I start cutting into the, the strings holding these guys to the backing, this is a really cool little display. If you were to leave it in the box, you almost have a 360-degree turnaround of what the figure looks like because it is essentially the same figure three times over. Which, yeah, I get it, there were there were three characters, three Silurian characters in Warriors of the Deep, and 
so you can get away with that in this instance. You know, nice little uh, handy bit of army building. But... Let's see if I can get the strings cut. Okay. Two of them are bound at the wrist and ankles. I'm hoping I don't have to uh, drop an edit in here to cover for me going and getting my scissors from the kitchen. But it may, uh, it may turn out to be unavoidable. The backdrop appears to be a rendering of the set of the inside of their submarine, which, you know, if these are if these are ancient reptiles who have been um, on Earth since before man was walking upright, um, uh, you know, if they're reptiles, if they're amphibians, I, I never really figured out why they need a submarine except that you have to build a set. And it has to be feasible on a BBC budget to build that set. And so, yes, suddenly these amphibious reptiles have to have a submarine. So I uh, believe if I read the back of the box correctly, that is another Jim Sankster 3D rendering. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. Yes, it is. Okay, what it is, is it's, um... There's a little bit more 3D stuff going on here. A bit more layering than I expected. So you have the sea base in the background. So you're looking through the windows of their submarine. That's pretty cool. That's... That is a level of detail in packaging that... Frankly, Character Options was under no obligation to provide us with. Okay, I may be able to free them much more, much more easily, much more readily here. And I'm going to wind up with pieces of the string all over my shirt. So, if, of course, if you're wearing a black shirt, you're going to wind up with... Uh, pieces of white string all over it. It's either that or cat hair in this house. Um, I I hate this part <laughs> of the procedure. Set my people free. My lizard people. Let them go. Kind of making fun of that old... Uh, if you don't get that reference, making fun of an old TV commercial about, uh, you know, a set of audio tapes of Charlton Heston reading the Bible. Let my people go. Old Hess was a bit more eloquent than I am. Okay. Stringed right in the face. Don't you love this stuff? I mean, okay. We have characters from a from a television episode that aired. Let's see, eighty four. Yeah, we're we're running up on uh, running up on thirty five years ago. Is anyone actually going to steal? Of course, I, I probably shouldn't ask that because I don't work in retail and I would probably be surprised by a raft of stories that would make me lose more faith in humanity than I already have. Aha! One of them is free. And like I said, they're basically the same figure three times over in this box. So I think we will get a pretty good look at, uh, at this fella. The three remaining Silurians were, um, well, we were led to believe the only remaining Silurians left over who survived 
the 1970 um, storyline that had John Pertwee. Let's see, and they have uh, they had wrist communicators all of a sudden. So I wonder if. Well, you can almost make him re reach his wrist communicator. Got some bony fingers. And it, it they really did duplicate the costume very carefully. It, it kind of looks like we're wearing Silurian pants, which I, I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, pantsless Silurians are kind of a more terrifying thought than they're just being Silurians sneaking up on you in the first place. The... The strangeness that crept into the design between 1970 and 1984 is that um, everybody kind of forgot why the the eye at the uh, at the top of their heads lit up in 1970. That was a kind of psionic weapon, and the actors in the Silurian suits in that 1970 episode really sold it. I mean, they were they were so juddery. They were they were very caffeinated Silurians. But you know, more to the point, when they were using that third eye and you know inflicting pain on unworthy primates. The yeah, unworthy, dangerous primates who were, whose experiments with uh, nuclear power were threatening the underground hibernation areas of the Silurians. Um, you know, when the actors and the Silurians were doing their thing and attacking the human characters, such as the Brigadier, the Doctor, or whoever dared to wander into their domain. They really, they really sold it with the body movement. And there is something else. Oh, it's the invisible rubber bands. I hate those. I hate the fact that, you know, I'm probably at, yeah, I'm at 13 minutes into the show, and we're still opening. Okay, so the, I'm guessing this is the lead Silurian because his, his center eye is activated. It's red. So the problem is, in 1984, when they created a new set of Silurian suits, um, everyone had forgotten why the third eye lit up. They had forgotten the, uh, the whole psionic weapon thing. And so they made it kind of like the, uh, the lights on the head of a Dalek. And thus, the um, the third eye lit up in time with the voice of the uh, the voice actor providing that particular Silurian's voice. All right, we are all we are all now out. I have all the string on my shirt. So um, yeah, two of the Silurians their their third eyes are blacked out, so they are not the ones talking. So I'm guessing uh, old Red Eye here is is the one in command. Now, as for the economics of doing a box set of action figures based on characters from a almost 35-year-old television show, the bodies were built on top of the existing body molds for the Sea Devils, which in Doctor Who continuity are related to the Silurians. And so you can reuse things like the the bony reptilian hands and parts of the legs and so on. But they created kind of a, uh, a cover piece to put over the body, which has the Silurian spine elements which in, in Warriors of the Deep, um, this is kind of a suit of armor. The, you know, that's not, that's not part of their body. That is a suit of armor. So we, uh, we now have 
Silurian action figures. We live in an age of wonders. And like I said, the, uh, the, the packaging here with the 3D detail, that is so extra. I, because you think about it, that has to have added to the not insignificant size of the box. Which I am going to, you know, I'm going to keep this part of it. You know, effort was put into it. I'm going to uh, hang on to the packaging. Yeah, I, I do like the, the Doctor Who box set packaging template that they have now. It's, uh, it's kind of, it's classy. It's timeless. It's, uh, the logo is the only thing that is really tied into the current series. Other than that, it's, you know any era of Doctor Who. And so I like to hang on to this stuff because, you know, someday um, these are going to be someone else's. And whoever winds up inheriting them after I am gone probably would like or appreciate the original packaging. Now I have another set here. Now this is from 2020 and I just hadn't opened it yet because it spent a lot of time in a box from moving and then finally it just sat on the wall for a while. These are the companions of the fourth Doctor. So you have Romana 1, Romana 2, and you have Sarah Jane in um, kind of her camo outfit from Genesis of the Daleks from Tom Baker's first season. So you really have uh, a pretty healthy representation of Tom Baker companions. We already had a figure of Leela. And there was already a figure of K-9. And um, there's already a figure of Harry Sullivan. Now, he's in another box set that I haven't opened because it moved with me. <laughs> so let me uh, extract the ladies here from their packaging. Um, and these are mostly... Mostly new molds, so really kind of a uh, kind of a surprising development. I did not ever expect to see these characters in action figure form. So I see we're uh, doing the transparent rubber band thing here to hold them into the packaging. So I will go ahead and start working on clipping through that. And maybe I can get Romana, Romana, and Sarah Jane out of their packaging uh, quicker than I did the Silurians. I think next time I will make sure I have scissors on hand so I'm not having to do this with nail clippers. But, hey, nail clippers did eventually get uh, the Silurians out of their out of their captivity. So let me see if I have... if I slice through enough stuff to... free Sarah Jane from her packaging. Yes, apparently I have. Um, all right. It's important to um, also point out that there has already been a second box set of exactly these same characters. Uh, Sarah Jane and each iteration of Romana in a different outfit. Um, there are a lot of outfits I would have chosen to have Sarah Jane in other than the camo, but there are enough other figures from Genesis of the Daleks, including Davros, and Harry, because uh, Harry is wearing... Harry is part of a uh, box set built around the Santaran experiment, which came immediately before Genesis of the Daleks in that s first Tom Baker season. And so he is wearing pretty much the same outfit as, you know, in one story as he was in the next. Let's see if we can get... Um, 
Romana out of the packaging here. But which one? We're going to uh, and try to get the Mary Tam Romana out here. Not really sure why they felt all the rubber bandage was necessary because the tray it was holding them quite securely. Okay, so here we have Romana from... Let me check the box here. And probably a little washed out in this lighting. Let me actually switch to the other camera here. Maybe you can get a better look, although a less focused look. Um, it does not say which outfit she is. I think that's from the Pirate Planet, if I'm not mistaken. That was the uh, Douglas Adams. Uh, that was the Douglas Adams four-parter from the Key to Time season. So there was absolute, again, absolutely no reason to expect Mary Tam as Romana to get an action figure. Um, I know among Doctor Who fans and collectors, there's kind of a tendency to moan and complain about the choices of characters we get. Um, the fact that we are still getting characters from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s at all is so unexpected. I mean, the fact that we have all the doctors from Hartnell through Jody is honestly, you know, as a kid, as a former kid, more than I ever could have asked for. Okay, here is Romana 2. This is the outfit she was in in Destiny of the Daleks. And do a switch to the other camera here. Um, so she has her scarf. You know, she starts the episode and kind of... She's making fun of the Doctor's outfit, and she has basically a copy of Tom Baker's costume. And then she switches to uh, something that is, you know, more more hers after he comments that her outfit is ridiculous while continuing, while he continues to wear essentially the very same outfit himself. So there we have the Companions of the Fourth Doctor and Warriors of the Deep. So um, I don't know if the Silurians stand a chance against Sarah Jane, Romana, and Romana. We'll find out. But um, all of these characters will be added to my Doctor Who shelf, which I will show you at a later date because it's, it's a setup. Um, but it is in another room, so I'd have to get up and take you in there. But, um, y you know, I, I know people complain about, I you know, I know when I opened the Bad Batch, I was like, okay, why isn't Omega part of this box set? But the fact is, you know, when Omega comes out on her own vintage collection card, oh yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to be picking that up, that, you know... That may be my, my last Bad Batch edition back here. But we're lucky that we are getting something as obscure as Silurians in the, uh, in the Doctor Who figure range. And, you know, companions who have not been on the show for more than 40 years. And the fact that the actors, or in some sad cases, as with Mary Tam, the late Mary Tam, the actors' estates are approving their likenesses for this kind of merch. Um, that's amazing. You know, we are so lucky that we have every doctor. We are lucky to have as many companions as we do have, and the creatures that we have. Um... The Doctor Who range, really, in 2005, 2006, kind of dragged me back into action figure collecting. I had checked out at that point because the Playmates Star Trek range was over. Of course, as of 2005, Star Trek on TV was over. Um, and I had really started reducing my collecting of Star Wars figures with Episode 2, and only only had a handful of Episode 3 characters. 
Um, the Doctor Who figures from character options really kind of permanently reignited my passion for this hobby. And, you know, I do have a passion for this hobby. So it's, you know, it's one of those things where we're fortunate to have what we have. And, you know, these are box sets that have come out either mid, you know, mid-pandemic. You know, it's just amazing to me that there are still things to collect. And another thing I'm really grateful about um, with the character options figures is they are not coming out at such a pace that I cannot afford to get them. Um, one other thing that I should have mentioned uh, specifically with regard to the Silurians is that these were an online exclusive. These did not go to retail. You had to go to characters' website to pick up the box set of these guys. Um, that that's an interesting approach. It, you know, it may be a sign of things to come that a character feels like maybe a shorter production run, a smaller production run of, you know, more niche characters is going to do better if they just take the orders directly and don't worry about trying to get them into Tesco or B&M in the UK, you know, as far as the UK retail scene goes. So, very interesting. I'm always happy to have more Doctor Who characters that did not previously exist in figure form. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.